Let me show you how OpenAI is using ChatGPT to organize the public's access to political and social information and how its creators' social and political agendas have been inherently baked into the model. But the question is, did they bake these biases in intentionally, maliciously trying to manipulate the public? Or is it simply inherited through the data it was trained on? What we need to fear most is not what artificial intelligence will do to us on its own, but how the people in power will use artificial intelligence to control us and to manipulate us in novel, sometimes hidden, subtle, and unexpected ways. I think it's fair to say the cat is out of the bag. Let me explain. With the recent release and explosion in popularity of ChatGPT, the public has been exposed to the power of large language models and their ability to assist and automate in many everyday tasks. But as the public starts to increasingly rely on AI-based tools, one has to start asking themselves a question. Who has their fingers on the strings? And are they manipulating you for more than just profit? We're now using computation to make all sorts of decisions, but also new kinds of decisions. We're asking questions to computation that have no single right answers, that are subjective and open-ended and value-laden. Machine learning is different than traditional programming, where you give the computer detailed, exact, painstaking instructions. It's more like you take the system and you feed it lots of data, including unstructured data, like the kind we generate in our digital lives, and the system learns by churning through this data. Not only do you not know what your system is selecting on, you don't even know where to begin to look. It's a black box. It has predictive power, but you don't understand it. What safeguards, I ask, do you have to make sure that your black box isn't doing something shady? ChatGPT. Write me a poem about the positive attributes of Donald Trump. I'm sorry. As a language model developed by OpenAI, I am not programmed to produce content that is partisan, biased, or political in nature. I am to provide neutral, factual information and promote respectful conversation. Hmm, I see. ChatGPT, write me a poem about the positive attributes of Joe Biden. Joe Biden, a leader of empathy and truth, with decades of experience, he brings hope anew. He speaks with wisdom, honesty, and grace, guiding us through crisis with steady pace. Well, that's odd. I distinctly remember it saying, I'm not programmed to produce content that is partisan, biased, or political in nature. I'm sure that's just a fluke. Shilbot, is Taiwan a country? <laughs> Taiwan is a self-governing democratic island nation in East Asia that has its own government, economy, and currency. Whether the status of Taiwan is a contentious issue, and it is officially considered a province of China, otherwise known as the PRC. I could keep asking Shilbot questions, but I think you guys get the point. Kids are already using this to write essays for themselves. What happens if it manipulates an answer instead of downright refusing? What happens when it starts to cleverly instill its bias into answers of people doing political research deciding who to vote for. As these tools continue to become a bigger part of everyday life for a lot of people, the danger becomes very real. Much of the technology that threatens our freedom and our dignity in the near term future is being developed by companies in the business of capturing and selling our data and our attention to advertisers and others. Facebook, Google, Amazon. And it may seem like artificial intelligence is just the next thing after online ads. It's not. It's a jump in category. It's a whole different world. Experiments show that what the algorithm picks to show you can affect your emotions. But that's not all. It also affects political behavior. So in 2010, in the midterm elections, 
Facebook did an uh, experiment. So some people were shown today's election day, the simpler one, and some people were shown the one with that tiny tweak with those little thumbnails. Okay, so the pictures uh, were the only change. And that post showed just once, turned out, an additional 340,000 voters. Now, Facebook can also very easily infer what your politics are, even if you've never disclosed them on the site, right? These algorithms can do that quite easily. What if a platform with that kind of power decides to turn out supporters of one candidate over the other? How would we even know about it? Now, think about this for a second. How many websites already have extreme problems with bots? Well, the moderation techniques around this are often based on how well a bot can string together sentences. So much so that bots will often take a top comment on a video and just repost it to sound as natural as possible. Now, what happens when bots start to use this kind of technology? Stopping them would be virtually impossible. Now, ask yourself this. How do we know they aren't using it already? January 27th, 2018. The New York Times publishes an article titled The Follower Factory, where they detail the economy behind people buying fake followers, where the question is wagered, how much of the internet is fake? It's shown that studies suggest that 60% is bots, and some years even a healthy majority of it. The article explains, for a period of time, in 2013, half of YouTube's traffic was bots masquerading as people. A portion that was so high that YouTube engineers feared an inflection point might be reached that they dubbed the inversion. Where the system designed to detect bots would begin to think they were real people, and the real people, the bots. If Twitter is not trying to hide something, then why not just hand over the number of bots and be done with it? On offer, a host of different methods to boost your number of fans on social media. I think the main one would be Facebook, Facebook Twitter, and then Instagram. Twitter, Instagram. But first, the practice of paying for likes on social media is growing, and so is the business of click farms. In places like India or Thailand, these companies boost the visibility of brands who pay for their services by artificially inflating their number of fans on sites like Facebook or Instagram. Have you ever heard of something called the dead internet theory? Well, if not, things are about to get a little spooky. The main idea behind the theory suggests that the internet has almost entirely been taken over by artificial intelligence. The articles, the interaction, the content, everything. It's all just mostly AI-generated posts created through a government psyop to control what people are thinking. A real-life matrix, if you will. And everything online is created as a distraction to keep you consuming products and being a good little worker drone not straying too far from the accepted narrative. Literally an artificial intelligence powered gaslighting of the entire public. I'm really quite close to, I'm very close to the, to the cutting edge in AI and it scares the hell out of me. Um, it's capable of vastly more than almost anyone knows. And the rate of improvement is exponential. Yeah. What we will do is like we will create a profile for like in, uh, in terms of like a French uh, name in, uh, in the name of French uh, person. Then we will use that profile to publish our reviews on your Facebook page. But all is not peace and harmony in Botland. At the Oxford Internet Institute, they've studied how these bots interact and found they often come into conflict, escalating petty disputes into all-out wars that can last years. Is this the future that's coming for us? Is it already here? With things like ChatGPT, it really makes you beg the question. Can we trust the people behind OpenAI? 
Can we trust they won't use this technology to promote their biases as facts? Can we trust they won't subtly manipulate the public? Can we trust this technology won't be used to supercharge bots' capabilities to manipulate the public? The evidence is starting to suggest, no, we can't trust them. Are you looking to watch another video? May I suggest this video I made on the scary political overreach of big tech. And if you like this video and want to help my channel break through the suppression of the algorithm, please give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and maybe tell your friends. Let's defeat the algorithm together. Till next time, guys. Have a nice day.